Sewer Commission meeting Wednesday, November 5th, 2014, 7 p.m. Call to order. Uh, those present are Commissioner uh, Higgins, Commissioner Demko, and uh, Randy Sylvester, DPW Superintendent, Stephen Dempsey, Super Sewer Supervisor, Steve Peterson, Weston and Sampson, uh, Liz Welch, Administrative Secretary. Anybody else on the advisory board here? Uh, Ted Joyce from the advisory committee. Okay, member of the advisory committee. And uh, Tom Patch. The first item on the agenda is the uh, Ware River Sewer District tie in policy discussion in Zero Rockland Street. Well, yeah, do you want to do the minutes first? When we get oh, yeah. the minutes out of the oh, way. Sorry, okay. we can't get the minutes out of the way. Yeah, let's get that done. Okay. Uh, make a motion. We. Uh, Somebody make a motion to approve the Okay, minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Okay. All right. I think at the end here we we talked about it wasn't on the on the minutes. Uh, Where you at, Eddie? At the end. I think okay. we, we were talking about payroll and I think uh, Steve said that he had given uh, the overtime to uh, other members of the of the uh, crew. What's the question, Ed? You said that you had given uh, overtime to other members of the crew at the last meeting. I <clears throat> I think what I said was that <clears throat> I had taken myself out of the remedial emergency rotation mm. uh, unless there was something that was uh, needed me there specifically so I'd let the guys catch up in the overtime that I had accrued during the shipping cottage project which yeah. we were all evened out now yeah I, I know I look at that payroll uh, I had you on there quite a few times though even though you said you yeah most of those <clears throat> excuse me most of those times were an hour early in the in the morning to meet you know the Weston and Sampson down in Shipping Cottage half an hour late so it appeared my name was there a lot but the guys were getting four hour increments and I was getting one and two so uh, that's how that panned out. Alright. Do you have anything? Nope. I, I, also, I also monitored that pretty close. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah. I signed the we want to, You want to try to keep the overtime you know in uh, Well you have, a, you have an overtime book anyhow right? That you we, post. we track it pretty close. Yeah, I get very, yeah, okay, that's good. I have a spreadsheet that I gave Ed, and I, I'm still working on trying to formulate it where it's bigger and more readable. Okay, great. All right, so then uh, you so make Ed, a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's get that done. Uh, the first item on the agenda is Weir River Sewer District tie-in policy discussion in Zero Rockham Street. Okay, uh, Mr. Noonan is not here this evening, uh, and I'm not sure why, but uh, we're in a position to help him out, first of all, uh, and it's going to be contingent on uh, the rules and regulations of the Weir River Sewer District. And I don't want to get into it here because he's not here, but uh, he will be eligible for service if he meets the criteria that we've established from the previous policies, okay, of the commission. So uh, maybe we could give him a call. Or you send want to explain what the criteria is? Well, the basic criteria is uh, you have to pay an entrance fee to get into the system, okay? Uh, because this was done by a private contractor, so it's not a betterment, but it's an entrance fee. And uh, the SOAR Commission previously uh, had sent out letters to all of those residents, okay, who were eligible for SOAR over there. And at the time, uh, Mr. Noonan has a lot that uh, is, is, needs to be soared, but he did not sign up for it. Okay, they sent them three letters asking him to sign up for it, and he did not respond to the three uh, requests, as others have. And I have all the records here of those people who have paid, and it's pretty much 95%. So uh, unless 
those issues are cleared up, you know, when the payments and so forth, the fees, um, we won't be able to render service over there, but if he agrees to pay the service on the current lot that he has, then we can, we can give him the service. Secondly, his request for a second service there on that lot, the lot has not been subdivided into two lots and only, only one service per unit lot. That's it. Okay, so he's in the process from what I understand and I, I, I haven't verified this, but he's trying to get the lot subdivided and if he does and he meets the criteria for subdivision, we will certainly give him that service also, but he's going to have to pay that fee yeah. along with the cost okay, of putting the service line in. And um, that, that's how it is. And I, again, I have a list of all of those people who have paid, uh, either paid their easements or betterments or entrance fees or are in the process of doing that with the uh, treasurer's office. Um, again, I'd like to make another comment about there are others, others in that West Sewer District that have not responded since the 2000 for 2005 when they really put that in so uh, we do have capacity but at some point it's going to run out so uh, we want to make sure that we take care of people who are on the line and uh, the DPW and the SOAR Commission we have the uh, ability to provide service to those people who didn't sign up so if they want to they want to sign up and once the capacity is gone it's done it's over with so uh, that's all I have to say about that. And I wish Mr. Noonan were here, but he's not, so. Can we send him a letter? Uh, we're gonna have to. Um, we're gonna have to send him a letter and we'll have to outline and summarize what his responsibilities and obligations are gonna be in order to meet that. Uh, I haven't spoken with the planning board at all to see if he's even filed for that second lot. You know, so, but it's contingent. If they say okay, we'll subdivide it. If he can get a sore, he can have the sore contingency the basis. Right. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So. So could you would you get a hold of Liz and get it? <coughs> uh, yeah, I'll get a Liz. Can I talk to you sometime? Okay. We'll maybe tomorrow or, or Friday or something. We'll get a letter off to him. Okay. Uh, all right. Any uh, are there any questions about this at all? From anyone? Okay. Ed. So that takes care of that Weir River Sewer yep. District tie-in yep. policy, right? Uh, the next uh, item is the 8 to 10 Ship Street. Okay. If you'd like to just uh, give your name and... Joan okay, Mrs. Cassiani. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want to speak up? Okay. So, um... You can put, pick you, the mic on it. That oh. mic, if we could get that up oh. for her. Let's see if I can... Maybe you want me to hold it? Yeah, no, you can I'll hold it if you want. Oh, we have an yeah. engineer here. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I'll leave that. Thanks, Dee. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I don't know how specific you want me to be at this point, but essentially well, we're here. Okay, we read your letter. Oh, okay. I went through it, and we bounced it by council, okay? And all of those issues that you put into your letter were opinions of others first of all and they were only opinions they were not the opinion of the board as a vote or anything else uh, you did a little research you went to another town and so forth and so on and none of that including those emails and so forth and so on as far as I'm concerned and the board is concerned are not approved by the board we had no input to any of that whatsoever uh, so we elected in September, <coughs> uh, September meeting to use the unit method to do the betterment for Ship Street. Now I'll let her rip. Go ahead. And so, how would that affect? Uh, it's not. It, it's not. It's not. You're just going to have to pay the same as everybody else. Which would be for our home. It would be how many betterments? Two. Two. Two that's correct. Right. So I heard what you said as far as I can appreciate as far as, you know, okay. email to a degree, but that was the information that I got. Basically, we made inquiries from the start, including going back when Kate Lathrop was here. And uh, we know what we have. We know we have uh, what was a two-family home right. know, in terms of a duplex style, let's say, like an antique cape. And uh, we remodeled at one point, and we took over three-fourths of the house, and the apartment is three rooms, one bedroom. Mm -hmm. So we 
knew it had that situation. So as I said, we initiated, um, made inquiries, and it started with Kate Lathrop. At that time, she wasn't sure, and she um, spoke to somebody. I'm not sure which person here is Steve Peterson. I'm not sure if it was you. It was, this goes back probably three years. Probably Jim Dow? No, okay. no. It was, um, well, whatever. Anyway. Right. She, because this came back to me in an email, which I don't have. And she indicated that our situation, given the description of it, was similar to other situations in the town. I think she used the phrase like a, an in-law apartment. And she said in those situations they had one stub and therefore it was one betterment. So that was my first you know, bit of information. And then after that, as we had meetings, I contacted uh, Mike Salerno as the chairperson. Chairman, yeah. Right. right. And um, so again, I, you know, started to have some conversations with him. So I was basing information, I mean, I wasn't directed to do anything else. I wasn't directed to do anything else. Basically, that was the information that I took in. It was also the information that we used to base our decision in voting for the project, because actually from the beginning, our inclination was not to do that, and um, in terms of cost. And then we weighed, as I think I said in the letter, one thing against the other in terms of using um, or having a, a septic system put in. And this seemed to make sense for us to do financially. Either one, obviously, would be huge for us. So as I said, this is the information that I, I got. Now, those were emails, but there was also one meeting which, um, give me a minute, probably was, I have an email from April 9th, 2013, so I'm assuming it was April 8th. All right, so this is, goes beyond a email or phone conversation. Um, it's probably in there, I think I attached it. And at the bottom, it says, hello Mike, do you have that one? Hello Mike, at last night's meeting, the topic of unit rate was discussed. April 9th, 2.13? Yes. At 7.45? Mm. Um, the email was sent at 10.46, so it looks like this. Yeah. April 10th at 7.22 um, a.m., was that the one? No, it says it's April 9th at the bottom. That's okay, the bottom one. Okay, it's okay. 7, 7.45 p.m. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, Mike. At last night's meeting, so that would have been April 8th. Right. The topic of unit rate was discussed. Susan Murphy indicated it could, would be based on water flow according to mass law requirements. My husband's my concern is that the rate we may face and how it is determined keeps changing. We're not sure what we can expect. Our only reason for supporting the project was, as I said, and now I go on about our potential cost for sewer system has approached and exceeded the minimum 25,000 we have been quoting the septic system. My point of quoting this here is that at that meeting, it was discussed. I think what came up was the fact that I th maybe at that time, I'm not sure, there were two homes that were considered to be two family. I think it was a neighbor who, who brought this up. Um, and then you see his response, hello, nothing has changed and so forth. And then I go on. But my point here, oh, and then I'm in um, part three there, and again, you can say that's an opinion, but it's information that I received making inquiries around this concern. And so in the one that would be, let's see, in the, right here, mm -hmm. top part. Do you mean our rate will be 1.25 based on bedrooms, the ratio of one to four, which is what he had said could be, and our total will be 25,000. Susan referred to a rate based on the water flow at the meeting. Later in the parking lot, to me, she referred to water flow again, and the base possibly was being a three bedroom house what she said to me was, like, three bedrooms, I guess, is considered the average house size. And that a one bedroom would possibly be, I'm adding possibly, one third of that. All right, so again, um, I'm taking the initiative to find out. Um, no one's directing me anywhere else. I mean, I went online. Um, the first time that we got any information around chapter, what is it, chapter 83? was this past June when we received the letter. And as I said in the letter that you have for me, there was no conversation. I know it's referred to in the first paragraph um, by Mr. Salerno, but at no time 
did we have any conversations about chapter 83 and that bearing? And certainly the time to have done that would have been at the very beginning, which I think I had once, I don't know if Ms. Welch would remember, but around that time, probably after we got the letter, I know I called her, I was pretty concerned, and made a reference to, to the fact that it would seem the timeliness for that was, was long overdue, those weren't my exact words, but that it should have been done before, which I still feel, because... I have a couple of points for you, one of which is the DEP requirement, especially in the design criteria, is 240 gallons a day per unit up to three bedrooms. They don't say one, two, or three, okay? It's, it's a unit calculation. And that's how the design criteria happens, okay? It also, and I have a letter from the building inspector two who bedrooms. you allowed into your home right. to verify that you were a two-family home. I have, I have a copy of that email from Mr. Clancy, so. Uh, based on the fact that it's a two-family home, it's two separate units, okay? We did not go by the number of bedrooms in each one of the homes in the area that were going to be sorted, and we finally elected, uh, just give me a minute here, to use the unit method. As far as your discussion with other people about possible um, ways of figuring this out for you, that was just opinion, okay? And in the betterment agreement, which I read through, uh, it does not mention any calculations of water flow as a, as a method, okay? It, it does, in the betterment act, I, which I have here with me this evening, it does not mention that particular. Which act are you talking about? The, the, the betterment. The chapter. betterment act. Right Is that here. the same as chapter 83? Oh. Okay, it's on page four, okay. Of uh, the ch 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 chapter 83, chapter 80, okay. And then it's uh, what I've picked out, section C, okay. And it says betterments, general ledger 80.1, 80.2, goes on all the way up to 83.15. It's, it's here, okay? And it basically outlines the type of betterment calculations that you can use to ca calculate your betterment. And can you just you tell me where that, where that is? I, uh, I have that right here. No, I know you do. <coughs> where could I look? Is that the, um, you're talking about the mass bylaws? Or no, no, no this, is, this is the betterment and special assessments okay. from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. What was, yeah, just, can you give me the name of that? What was it again, please? The document. Okay. The document is the Betterments and Special Assessments Assessment and Collection Procedures, Massachusetts Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services. It's the betterment. It's how betterments are, are handled, you know, collection-wise, but also assessed. Right, no, okay. I've, I've read the different things okay. online, and I've. I've so, um, so we simply decided, in order to to do it fairly, quite honestly, was to to do it in the unit mode. Okay. Well, I continue to. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want you to know that I, right. we know I, all of this. I mean, I know yeah. all of this. I've gone through it with you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, earlier. I think you know that we all yeah. these. Things, and I hope that you will take that into consideration. That you looked at what I wrote? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, because all those opinions and all those other I things. Get, I hear you, but at the same time, I'm, as a, as a resident, I'm looking to the sources for feedback. And if there's no, I'm, I'm not saying that because somebody emails me, well, you know, one, one and a, 1.25, you know, one to four ratio, or one to three that that's carved in stone. I'm, but I'm saying that I'm basing decision making on people who are either members of the committee, chairperson, or somebody, I, I don't know if her position is legal counsel, town counsel, I, I don't know Susan Murphy, but she's counsel. I'm, I'm soliciting information from people who I would consider the sources. And that's information I got to, to, to use or whatever or to, to consider or whatever you want to say. 
at no time did anyone reference, at, at no time, chapter, you know, uh, chapter 83, I know it's 15 and 15A, so I mean, there has to be some accountability for that. There, I, I, what else do I rely on? What else do we rely on as a source of information? And also, Excuse me, um, just, yes. just, no, we, we had sent, this is a letter for Lyle uh, Tari, uh, 32 Ship Street, mm -hmm. and it was the same same principle, okay? It was uh, a <clears throat> betterment assessment, and uh, the betterment assessment for the project be determined using mm -hmm. uniform unit method, which is described in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 83, Section 15, as follows. Now, they had the same thing. They had a, a two, two unit, two, bed, uh, two, right. two apartments. Right. And that's what the way it was assessed. It's the same okay. thing. I thought they were one family now. I thought no, they, two. Had, they have been, yeah, they, that has changed. The building inspector has changed it to a single family. They no longer have a rental unit right. in that one, okay? Can I, is, can I just take a peek at that to see if we got one, too? <laughs> I, oh, that's, is this the one that, from, oh, from, um, from Mike, and that starts with where he says that he, which I debated. Um, all right, so you use the term being fair. Honestly, I don't think for three rooms, three rooms, one bedroom, it is. If, if this house was on the market, it wouldn't be marketed as two family. And, um, you know, I have looked online, and it's my understanding, looking at, um, all right, I've just looked at, a, at a other towns' um, websites, including Situate. You said you looked at that also? Oh, yeah, you, I, I read your letter. Right. Okay, and, you know, again, all of this information that you provide in your letter was not voted on by the board as far as having any legitimacy. Those were opinions of others, not of the board, okay? You can ask a thousand people anything you want, that you are right to your opinion, and they have a right to their opinion, okay? But when it comes down to brass tacks, it's, it doesn't have any bearing on the commission because we did not vote for any of those opinions. But it had a bearing on us when we made the decision. Well, unfortunately, maybe maybe it did, but I, I can't uh, tell you what the discussions were all about with your other uh, opinions that you were seeking, but, you know, you've got five or six different opinions here of how things should be, okay? And so we went to the books and we said, okay, we're going to use the unit method, and that's what we selected. Right. The unit method, I, I understand how that yeah. works, but... What I've noted, including in Situate and a couple of other things I've seen online, which I can read for you here. We're not Situate, okay? I, oh, I know you're not Situate, but uh, at some point, I believe in the minutes I refer it, um, I think I have it back there, that um, Hingham was looking at 19 other, um, it was something that, again, Mike Solano said, but this was from the minutes that, that what? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I have, I'll be honest with you, I sort of feel as if it's just being dismissed, as if, um, no. I do. That's, that's why we, that's why we, you're here this evening to say what you need to say, you know, and I respect that, but I want you to also understand that we've already made a decision here on the board, okay, on okay. a full board for the unit measurement. And we're not going to, at least I'm not going to support a vote to change that betterment, which is probably going to be in the mail with the next three or four months, to the number of bedrooms per house. We can't unwind this whole thing just for that accommodation, okay? Well, I don't consider it, I would think it was, let me ask you this before I continue. Are there other um, residences in town that would have a similar situation to me with, say, some, that might be on the, um, on the sewer system that would have? Not that I'm aware of, no. Mm -hmm. But there could be, there could be someone that's Who been. Knows? No, who knows? Okay. All right. Um, and again, getting back to the three rooms, um, since, so I said I had several. All right, I looked at Stitchwood, Lunenburg. I know that's out, you know, in the, the sticks, whatever, and maybe not one of the 19 towns. Um, I looked at, it's called the MMA, the Municipal Association, Massachusetts Municipal Association, Implementing Effective Betterment Policy. Talks about there. These, 
in terms of multi-family residential properties. These can vary from in-law apartments and duplex apartments to apartment buildings. A method of units based upon the number of bedrooms is a potential measure. However, often bedrooms may be disguised as dens or family rooms. That wouldn't apply to us. A cleaner method would be to apply a multiplier to each unit based on the total number of rooms. For example, a unit with more than three rooms could be considered one unit and three or less, one, um, one half. This rule would hold whether considering an apartment within a house, a duplex, condominium, or a large apartment building. Right. And then another one I read about was accessory dwelling units. This is, was under Smart Growth, Smart Energy Toolkit on the mass.gov website. <clears throat> Comment, the limitations on accessory dwelling units that are identified in the bylaw will strengthen the distinction between two family dwellings and single family dwellings with accessory dwelling units. And they go on to say, once an accessory dwelling unit has been added to a single residence or is already there, it shall never be enlarged beyond the 900 square feet allowed by this bylaw. Ours is just 611 square feet. My point is, I hear what you're saying, that you've made a decision. But honestly, I feel it's very unjust. Clearly, others are open to seeing something that would seem to have, um, I, I guess, more more fairness, I mean, I think it's, it's, I understand that you could have a three bedroom house and a six bedroom house and they're all going to be assessed the same way. But in several places I'm seeing a distinction for three room, one bedroom, and in this case, small square footage. Are we, what's that from now, that article you got there? The last one was, um, it's under smart growth slash smart energy toolkit on the mass.gov website. Is it and, and anything to do with the uh, uh, assessment and sewer betterment, two family though, is it? I'm sorry? It has anything to do with the, the two family assessment uh, and betterment, sewer betterment, uh, the state law. is not, not um, Quoting the state law is what I'm saying. You say it's not under the state law. Right. No, I guess, I don't know. That's it's probably, a, that may be a guideline, mm -hmm. okay, in some communities or maybe some other state agencies who look at these things, okay? But for our purposes, we have to go by the betterment and special assessments. That's the only thing that we really have to go by, okay, because it's, chapter and verse and so we go by it and, and that's all we can do if that's the case then even though you're not situated or any other place why is it that others can well i can't speak for others or, or what others are doing or not doing whether they're SOAR commissions or their dpws whatever their regulations are however they do it you know there's probably many different ones but we choose to go by the letter of the law here in the betterment and assessments book and the criteria for design also, as I explained earlier, okay, set by the DEP. So that capacity which, which we have installed in Ship Street, part of that capacity, okay, is for a two unit, uh, you know, a two family house, which is your house, okay? That's part of what that capacity is for because you were, uh, by the Building Commissioner's records, a, a two-family house. We have, we have it, two. You're, you're a two-family home. <laughs> I, look, I know that he came in and we have, we have two residences, but I don't think it's by any means a typical average, whatever, two-family. I know they all vary, but I, I feel as if there's actually sort of, um, a blindness to, to seeing and, and you know I understand any Tom Dick and Harry can come up here and say well I want this that or the other thing but I think this is a very reasonable um, request I guess to make um, and I think um, based on the information that I received I mean I you know I, I feel as if we took the initiative we took the information we got nobody made any reference to look into something else we even asked, I didn't, didn't know what the process was as far as when you make your decisions for the betterment. I know from reading the minutes that it looks like it was something that was done just maybe in September of this year. It looks like it's been an ongoing thing, making policy improvements and changes. I wasn't sure um, some months ago if that was something that would be discussed publicly. I guess 
that's not the case. Is that right? Is that something when you made the determination for the betterment unit? It was done at a public meeting. Yes. In September? Yes. Oh, all right. Okay, it's in the September uh, minutes. Oh, I mean, it's probably not. Okay. At least I didn't it's see it. You know, I think it just went to the full. <coughs> That's correct. I don't know, but I, yeah. whatever. I, I had them up until yeah. I didn't see that one. It hasn't uh, been posted yet. Oh, it hasn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I also know that um, when we were going through this process these several years and having meetings here, uh, there was a family, the Russells, I don't know their first name, they were on Cottage Street, and um, they had, um, they were selling their house, I think, and they had put in a new septic system based on the information that they were told. This is in the minutes, I don't, I don't, um, let's see, I don't have that here. Anyway, um, they were concerned when they found out that this project was going, possibly going forward, because they had based the information on what they were told. Long story short, they were able, they were actually told at that meeting that they could apply for an abatement. Is that something that we can do? Uh, the, the <clears throat> um, I consider? don't think so. I mean, the, the unit, pro, the unit, we've already voted for abatement based on the number of units, okay? I, I hear you saying, I just honestly, I feel as if this a, um, <clears throat> Now, what was the situation with the family you're talking about on the abatement? They, when this project started, probably was it 2011 or so, three years ago. It turned out that I, I'm, I'm going to guess maybe several years before they had recently put in a septic system, and I think they had come to the town to find out if there was going to be any work on the street. I don't remember the particulars. I know it would be, in the, and I know it's in the minutes. Um, and so they based their decision to um, to put in the septic system on the information they received from the town, I don't know which department, um, to the effect that it would, there wouldn't be any work done on the town or whatever. So I don't remember exactly what it was. But they didn't want to incur this additional cost of a betterment in addition to having just put in a septic system. So, and again, this says in the minutes that since they were told something else, I mean, I can send it to you or, or you can find it, um, they were allowed to apply for an abatement because they had um, made a decision or so forth based on information they got, you know, basically on what they were told, and then <coughs> things changed which would affect them financially you know, several years later when the, um, when this project started. So I feel there are some similarities to, I hear from you. They, they had, that was a, that was something more specific than what we're talking about here, a, a, okay? Yeah. I, I don't see that that impacts what we're talking about here, to be honest with you. Um, they made a financial decision to go ahead and put a septic system in, then the sewer came, and so they made an appeal for an abatement, and I don't know how that went. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't we, even we've never received an appeal or we've abatement. Never, to so, my knowledge. so uh, to our knowledge, okay. Okay, I, 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 I don't know if they did either. I don't even really know them yeah. that well. So I, just know I was at that meeting. If we I could kind of just kind of stay focused here on your problem. Well, my, my the reason uh, I'm bringing it up is because yeah, okay. I, I think the similarity is getting information that you're basing your decisions on, and I will still go back to that. I, I still say that we based information, based decisions on information we got from members of your board. And the, the former chairman? Yes. Okay. That's right. And so to sort of suggest that that doesn't matter really seems, I don't know if it's irresponsible, but you know, I, I guess I'm really sensing this, you know, I hate to say rigid thinking, but just focused on one thing, you know, we've done this, that doesn't matter, and, and I think it should matter. Well, again, you know, none of that, and I read your letter, I read it and read it and read it, just to make sure that, you know, that I understood it. None of that was voted on, it was just opinion. Okay, you went to several different people, even went out of town to get an opinion, okay, and that's okay. You have a right to your opinion if you want to ask for opinions, and that's fine. But in the end, in the end here, uh, we had to make a decision based on all the customers, 
and in the law, in the law of the betterments. Okay, yeah. we have to go by that, John. We have to go by that. Okay. Now, if I contact the, um, you know, whatever, whatever was with the law is, I can't. Well, whatever. I guess I can find that out for myself. Um, can I ask? Is, is one of you the chairperson? Are you the chairperson? Okay. Yeah. Um, can I hear more from you? What your thoughts are? Well, it, the, the whole thing is, is, Bob says, it's the law that we're going by on the, on the betterment, you know, and that's what we're, we're going by. And there's, there's no deviation, is, is what he's saying as far as the law. Then, then why wasn't that referenced from the start? I don't, I don't know who you spoke to with the stats, so I, I can't. Kate Lathrop was Kate the first Lathrop. person. Yeah. So I just called the office. Yeah, but those people are not authorized quite frankly, to make decisions on no, behalf I, of the SOAR Commission. Oh, okay? I, just, I wasn't taking them as, as a, 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 you know, any finality. Right. Yeah. There was information. I was, in other words, I, I took a first step. That was information I got. Mike Salerno, and then, as I said, um, Susan Murphy, listening to what she said at a meeting. I think it was in this room. And then, yes, it was a conversation I had with her. But again, but one of them was in the meeting. And at that same meeting, and I, I don't know who, I'm sure I could check the notes to see who you were, were here. Um, Mike referenced that, and I think it was the same meeting where the discussion came up about two family houses and what it would be, and I think Tom said something, not Tom, uh, Mike said something to the effect of, um, you know, the size of one particular apartment. And at one point at that meeting, he said, well, it would be, I'm not quoting, it would be, uh, more than one, meaning the full betterment for the house, but less than two. Um, so that was at a meeting. I am I correct that all of, I know that Mr. Patch uh, records, but am I correct that um, all of these meetings They're are? Recorded. They're right. recorded, yes. So that if I wanted to look into your yes. archives, I could find that one, and they're not edited or anything, it's just. Right. All right, so. I think Liz probably could help you out with that. Okay. So. At that meeting, now this is at a meeting with, and, and Mike wasn't there alone, there were other members. And the reference was made to, and again it was a reference to the, the two family with a small apartment, because it wasn't the other house. You know, the idea, again, yes, it wasn't carved in stone, but it was set at a meeting here, and no one refuted it, no one said, well that doesn't follow the law, or what's the law, all right? so. That has to have some bearing. I mean, I don't know. Again, I think there has to be some accountability on the part of the committee when information is is you know looked when when inquiries are made to come back with something that's that you can bank on. And I'm not talking about a particular figure. I'm talking about I would think that somebody on the committee, chairperson, whatever, would come back and say, well, this is the law. Well, you need to check the law. It wasn't said, not only wasn't written, it wasn't said at that meeting. Does that have any bearing? See, uh, it's hearsay. I, you know, I can't. Oh, I, well, I'll, I'll look at the um, yeah, I think meeting. You, oh, sure, you have no. to give us some more information. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. All right. But to, to be, uh, it, for this meeting, okay, uh, I'm not willing to make a motion or support a motion to change the betterment. Okay, I, I won't. I won't support it. I don't know about Ed, but well, I know I'm going to pursue it. Um, you know, I understand Please I have go. the right to do that. Yeah. yeah. And um, I hope Please do that. You know. Yeah. I will. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for coming here. Next item on the agenda is uh, continuation of consolidation agreement discussion. Okay, Ed, um, the selectmen uh, last Thursday night, they extended this agreement for 30 okay. days. Okay. But you know what I'm really concerned about, Ed, and I'll be honest with you. Okay. If we don't come up with something very quickly and get off the dime here, 
this could go into default, okay? Is on, uh, it, this could go into default, and, and that's going to be the agreement, and not on, not on our part. Yeah. But uh, we could lose anything we have asked for here. I, I, don't, I don't know how much longer we can continue to get extensions, okay, on this. And when Eric was here before, uh, he wanted to uh, change a paragraph up there on one of the uh, items. And uh, we asked him to write out something that, that we could give them to see so that they could either incorporate it into it or approve it. And uh, nothing has happened. This agreement hasn't gone forward at all, Ed. We, we have to do something with it. Well, we really haven't uh, got a, a, an outline of the agreement uh, to discuss. I mean, Eric had one. And then uh, I think Susan, I don't rather, uh, Hermelotta had an agreement that she made out, you know, but we, I think we've got to get together with the, uh, the two uh, agreements that were drawn up and see if we couldn't come up with the final, you know. Well, okay, we need, we need to do something if, if that's what you want to do, if we can sit down with the selectmen and DPW and just go through it and be done with it, sign it right then and there if everybody's happy, do you want to do that? Yeah, because I think we, we're, we're going to have a new, another new member shortly. <laughs> uh, because at some point. Eric is, is giving his resignation. He called me tonight. Okay. So I think that maybe we, we can set up a meeting and, and discuss it in the entirety. So is there a second proposal that the commission is proposing to the selectmen? Because I have not seen one. No, this this disagreement here, Randy, the the one we've been. This is the one I believe that you also have right. the draft of that. What I'm saying is, with the few exceptions here of a few things, uh, this should be able this should be able to fly without a lot of discussion. Okay, if there are other proposals out there, I have not seen them. I haven't discussed them. I haven't talked to them any. But I, I have no idea where that came from. To be honest with you. But what I do have is this, okay, and, and I'm sure you guys have it. And Ed, you Who drew up the, what law firm drew up the original agreement, do you know? Uh, I think it was, it was John Asher and uh, Michael Salerno and others. No, it's got to be a law firm that drew it up, it can't be. Uh, it, was, it was town council, I don't know exactly what it was. You know what it was? I don't know exactly who the town I think we should look in and see who I'm it was. I'm Tom Coughlin, but I'm not positive. Yeah. See, if he drew that up as the town council, and then we go to him for uh, an opinion, it's against uh, the ethics uh, thing, but he can't be doing easy, both things, you know, and re representing the, the, the uh, sewer commission and the agreement with the selectmen. The conflict of interest, I would say. I know, we we should look into that to find out who drew it up, and then we'll take it from there. And we we discuss the uh, the agreement with the selectmen. Okay, and would you like us to get a hold of you and tell you who drew up the agreement? Right. Okay. And what about a new agreement? or a proposed agreement. Do you have a proposed agreement that's different than the one that we have? I, yeah, I have, well, I guess I do. I have one here that I think Eric <coughs> drew up, and then I, think I have another one that I think maybe it was uh, somebody else drew up here uh, that he gave to me. So I think we should sit down and, and go over those. I, I, think, make a I, think, I, I think you should come up with a, a draft or a final proposal or a proposal so I can get it and I can give it to the to the selectmen to, to look at. All right. I mean you have you have the one that was drawn up. Yeah, I've got one here. <coughs> if you want to give oh, it to uh, you can make copies and, and we can get them to the appropriate people and then you can arrange a meeting with the well, selectmen. It, Ed, you, we have, you have a separate proposal from Eric that Eric had drawn up. Yeah. Okay, this is the one that I believe. Is that the same one? This not, well, this is similar, but this is the one that came from the selectmen's office. And I think it's, when we reviewed this initially, 
there's just about everything in here that was in there with a few exceptions we wanted this to become for instance I had recommended that we make this a permanent agreement because there's, there's no need to keep renewing this thing every so often we also uh, there was a thing in there on uh, we have to change the address of the sewer commission over there to the the uh, department uh, administration office over there in Bear Cove Park and there were one or two other little things but there's absolutely nothing in here well, there, there, were, there were changes made you know, that, there were changes made from the original one uh, statement of work so that, I think we've got to, dis to discuss that and then bring it up at, at uh, the next meeting the changes that were made and resolve them well okay do we have a single document that we want to present to the select yeah right here okay then I'm gonna take this one let me see. No, let me see. Is that the same? Maybe that's the same. very, very much the same. Okay. Yeah, that's just, it is the it's, same. It is the same. This is the consolidation agreement. Okay. okay. Um, there might, and it's my understanding when I had spoken with Eric. Okay. He was he was kind of all set with it, and there was uh, one of the things that he would like to change, or he he wanted to change, was that fifty thousand dollar emergency fund. So we were going to simply add for emergency use and, and uh, he he agreed to do that I mean he agreed that was okay and then there was some other issue that he had that uh, I haven't seen any uh, well here's, here's a change right here uh, see we've got to go over this I think before we can discuss it here depart into and rather than together with okay so that's one change that was made there's another one here uh, a statement of work Whereas previously uh, ended in the consolidation and wish to continue the set agreement in accordance with the terms and conditions contained herein. Okay, and then there's another one after that. Those are the two that are in question. I'd th like to discuss it. Before oh, okay. Okay. All right, but we have to we have to present the selectman with with something. We'll give him a copy and, and we'll we'll discuss it. Fair enough. All right. Yes. Yes. What about the uh, town administrator? Yeah, signing contract at the he's 50, the He's the kind of the uh, dispute resolution guy. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, we should see if we can get, I know Ted's busy now with, with budgeting and so forth, and, and uh, but maybe we could sit down with Ted and do and I and Ed, and we could hammer this thing out. Okay, and I think we have the base document right here that looks it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, it's the same one. There's a few we're as and they're as, and who the hell knows what that means, you know? Yeah. But uh, I think this this will fly. All right, we can do that. Yeah. All right. We'll set up a meeting. Uh, okay. I'll talk to. I'll, do you want to talk to Ted, or do you want me to talk to him? Yeah, you, you want All to right. talk to Ted. No, okay. You have a question? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ted Joyce from the Advisory Committee. Yeah. Would it be possible to get a draft of this document, the consolidation agreement, posted on this your commission website? Yes. Uh, it's obviously up to the discretion of the committee if you've got multiple versions you're working on just so I think to be able to have it in public light as to what is the latest draft and yeah we could do the latest draft discussing back and forth just to be able to have a sense of uh, more kind of transparency on where this is going forward in right the process, so uh, if we can get can we get a copy of this tonight downstairs or anything or is any, anything any office open that we could I don't think there's any okay uh, we'll get it tomorrow then okay um, what? No, no hurry for this okay. I don't. No, I'm not saying for me personally to post it tonight. Yeah, not, uh, I would like to have one and maybe just bring it to advisory for. Okay. 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 But I think more in general, just speaking in terms of posting it, if, if there's something that you have as a front runner of the draft that you're working with in terms of having it available for citizens. Okay. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, bodily billing discussion. Okay. Oh, one other thing is um, there is no agreement now. The commission is not extended. The agreement that's currently in place, well, oh. you will have to agree it. We've been five days without. Yeah, we so. have to extend the extend it. Okay. You need okay. you need a vote to extend it. Yeah. So we we'll make a motion. Make a motion to extend it. Thirty days. Yeah, extend it for uh, thirty days. Second the motion. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I, I originally uh, have some figures here that uh, Randy sent. Uh, I have one September 29, 2014, quarterly sewer billing. And the grand total was 45092 There's a copy of it if somebody wants to look at it. Then I had another one back in uh, September 25th. 22,092. There seems to be a quite a variance. Then I go back to February 4th, 2014, quarterly billing proposal. And uh, I stated would the sewer commission like to provide both residential and commercial quarterly billing. Uh, we looked, I looked at this 10 community, local communities included the use of quarterly billing as benchmark standard. And that would enable retired senior residents with uh, less financial strain. Randy stated that he talked to uh, Gene Montgomery doing his billing. The cost is 2700 each bill, as well as about 60 hours of time. So there's a big difference in, in the cost. I, I, I don't know. Well, what, one of the costs of 22000 is 2700 Well, 27 yes, but that there's, there's time involved. Yeah. And what Gene explained to me is that she would have to hire another person in her office to take care of the building on her end. Okay. We would have to hire another person in our office to handle t preparing the bills. Okay. So that's where those costs came from, plus incidental costs. Not incidental, I think it was $4,500 in the mailing because you can double me a mailing costs. Okay. Well, now that being said, I I went to Jean Montgomery at the request of the commission and I asked her about um, putting a notice on the bill and she came back with a letter which I believe you all have yep. is that <clears throat> um, she basically says um, sewer commissioner's current bill not only meets the statutory requirements for the bill design but also includes important information regarding who to call with payment inquiries excerpt if you have a questions regarding payment of the bill please contact the office and it gives the phone number um, she also goes on to say the bill also advises seniors who may be having financial difficulty, financial difficulty paying their bill of their rights under the Chapter 59, Section 41A, Tax Deferral, directs them to the assessor's office for the assistance. And it goes on to say age-based deferments are, based, are available under Massachusetts law administered by the assessor's office. Um, <clears throat> and then she goes on to say that payment plans are set up on an as-needed basis by the treasurer's office. Um, <clears throat> in order is that a statute or is it something that she's doing? That's something that she's doing. Yeah. So if anyone that has trouble paying their bill, they can call call the treasurer's office as and and they will set something up. As and this has been going on since they they, they took over or have been collecting the payments. Yeah. So this has actually been ongoing as we go. <clears throat> I, Ed, I just yeah. want to make a point, excuse me, Randy, yeah. that this total of 17859 comes from the treasurer's estimate of her cost over there, okay, and then the sewer commission DPW cost, okay, to process the bills and stuff was 27233 okay, for a total of $45,092. So the cost of the DPW sewer, uh, preparing uh, the billing and, and so forth and so on, and then the cost of the treasurer's work is another seventeen thousand eight fifty nine for a total of forty five thousand dollars. Now, how come before the sewer department made this, did this billing, there was, there was not that cost? They had people part time. They had one full time, uh, one part, two part times, and they did the billing. I mean, it wasn't that much money, and it, come to think of it, storm, well, well, stormwater management program is going to be implemented here, and they're going to be doing it on a quarterly billing. So if okay, they're going to okay, be doing, okay, all right. Can we discuss I'm, one one thing at a time? Well, I'm just I'm trying to bring this yeah, in. As well, quarterly, first first quarterly of all, a stormwater management plan will go into effect, and as is in effect, but there's not a utility for quarterly billing, and and to my knowledge, will not. 
That will be handled by the DPW and appropriate apartments. I understand. Departments. I understand. I went to the meeting, the MWRA, and, and the, the town. I also went there, but we have to set up a utility for that, and I don't think either an enterprise system or a flat okay. Fi payment. Okay. For a household. Okay. If the town so chooses to to get a utility for stormwater and stormwater management, they can develop an enterprise and. I understand that. Okay. We have not even been close to doing that. Phase two, st the new permit has not even come out yet. It's only in the draft form. It's and I went, I went to the same meeting and listened to their presentation. So the permit hasn't come out, and there's comments due, I believe, at the end of November and December. So they're out there presenting the stormwater and the new and the new uh, requirements for it, and we have to get money in our budget to cover those requirements. But there is not a utility being formed by the town, at least n not to my knowledge, to take care of that as of yet. The DPW has taken care of a lot of the requirements, as have co conservation and um, um, other, other departments, which I don't have the planning department. I went to this meeting, Muni Works, Municipal Workshop, provides cities and town resources in a forum dedicated to water and sewer issues, okay? Mm -hmm. And that was one of the topics that was brought up. Yes, absolutely. And, 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 and there, I've been to I've been similar seminars, but you, the town has to decide to form a utility before they can go out to quarterly billing. But there okay. are three municipalities that are already in this. Newton is in it. Reading is in it and Fall River. I understand that. Okay, so I mean, it, it, the, the law is in effect, so it's, it's it, not. It's not a law that we form a utility. It's a law that we do the, do the requirements of the of the uh, NIPTES permit. Right, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's, that's the law. That's right, right. And, and we we will do do that once we get the final permit. Okay, and we're working on that with engineers. I'm working on it with engineers and submitting submitting the necessary paperwork and whatnot. The NOI. So, but it's not a requirement to form a utility and pay quarterly. So, well, that was what they was they were paying on quarterly. That's why I said you might be able. Said to that's an that. option to, to pay for it. For yeah. it. But there's pros and cons on that, and I'd rather not get into it. Yeah, and there's a there's a whole lot of caveats in there. I was reading some of it where, uh, like sump pumps and different things, there are different laws on the, in the. Uh, policies and procedures that we have already established for collecting funds, okay? Uh, so, I mean, we can't be in conflict with that. So no, I would, I'd like to look in and find out how, how come, you know, we did it before, it wasn't that costly, you know, we, it seems that I'm serving. We did what before? The, the, the sewer department did it before. Did what before? These, the billing, you know? They do the billing now. Sewer department doesn't do the billing. You people do the billing. We are the sewer department. Yeah. <laughs> we do the sewer. We do the billing. Yeah, that's what and I'm so saying. But, but prior to prior to you doing we're, the billing, we're doing it at less of a cost now than we did before. As what was the cost before? Can you give me the cost before? Absolutely. I, I right. don't have it right now. Okay. But I, I I'd, like have to, it. I'd like to bring that up at the next meeting. So uh, the next other thing was the stormwater management program, and <clears throat> Randy says he looked into it. So we'll uh, let that go. And the next one is sewer policy update, water Western and Sampson. Yeah. Um, so we're uh, continuing to work on uh, on the rules and regs, the update. Um, we had the work session back a while ago. Um, compiled a bunch of information. We're that continuing. Is, yep. Yep. So that's there. What we need to do is, you know, we got a lot of feedback at the work session that we had. Steve yep. has provided a marked up copy uh, with some uh, some of his suggestions, um, and we still need to add in um, some elements that we're looking at right now: sewer extension policy, um, connection fee policy, the stuff that you were um, discussing in relation to the Weir River District. Um, we need to incorporate yeah. that language into the into the regs yeah. uh, and whatnot. So what we need to do is finalize the document so the commission has a chance to look at the the complete document um, with edits beyond what you have right now there, Bob. 
But, you know, I've gone through all this, I've hacked it up like Good. everybody else, and uh, I'd like to have an opportunity to discuss, maybe in an executive session or something, some of these things. We so, should probably have a follow-up to yeah, the work follow session. follow-up on this because to, uh, some things here are, um, I'm not quite clear. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I just need Absolutely. some clarity more than anything else. And uh, a couple of changes. And then um, also in the discussion, I think there was one thing that was really, uh, yeah, I want to make sure that we, that we get cover of things like as built plans in a timely manner of 30 days or 40, you know, just things like that that we need to, to put in there so that when they come to us for, for service and so forth and so on, it's right there. You know, Steve doesn't have to do anything to say, here it is. You know, you had 45 days or 30 days to get that as built plan and stuff like, you know, little things like that and some other issues, but I think we can get right through it if we could. I, I, think, I think the other work session was very productive, but we did, uh, time closed in on us at the end. There was so much information to cover, so it's probably worth um, scheduling a time to yeah. just finish that up. I'd like to look at the comments that you have and yeah. then be able okay. to finalize it yeah. okay. for final review. Okay. So I can work with, with you through, through Liz yeah. to set up a, another time to, mm -hmm. to finish going through it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, other items that were not reasonably known 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Does anybody have anything on that? What about the budget? Uh, yeah. we we're, we're all set with this? We're all set looking at this for now? or? I mean, it's, it's all there, very similar and, you know, it looks appropriate. Is there a time frame I've, on that you're saying, Randy? I got to have the budget in by Friday to the, to the, to the town administrator. Well, do you, have, do you want to go through it now? Sure. You, uh, okay, you, so you, that you... The commission has to vote on the... Yeah, that's board. what I mean. Let's go through it now and we can... I mean, uh, basically, uh, salaries, yeah. um, um, the big... There is an increase, of course, uh, due to step increases in the department in the cost of living. Um, there is also, Steve went from a grade 12 to a grade 13, so there is a, there is a, like a 6 percent increase Yeah, that's increase okay. There. Sure. Um, anything else is all contractual as far as the union personnel, yeah. such as longevity. Yeah. Um, expenses. Uh, there is one major increase of $10,000 on uh, maintenance other. Um, and, and this is actually over the last three years, the average cost has been o over $55,000 and um, I'm upping at another $10,000 from 43000 to 53000 in order to cover some of those costs. Because when we, when we, if we don't up it now, and that's the average, uh, we ended up taking it from somewhere else in the budget. Okay. So. Yep. Can I uh, just ask one question? Sure. In light of the recent publicity about the electrical rates, uh, Randy, that are heading our way, I guess uh, we're in for a sizable increase over at least the next year or two. Um, as far as the budget goes? Yeah. Well, uh, the, way, the way I'm instructed to do the budget is I fill out a utility sheet. Yep. Which gives the usage of electricity, um, and we're working all the time on decreasing the usage, yep. um, such as the I and I program. Yeah, keep down the pumping costs. Um, the the uh, I guess it's the town accountant or selectman or whomever <laughs> fills in the cost of that, and that's going to be the, on the final budget. Oh, okay. That'll be my final budget number. I fill out the utility worksheet yeah, okay. with, with our usages, yep. and then they, they fill in um, the actual uh, dollar amount. Okay. So we're working on that, yeah, okay. but it's basically through the I and I program yeah, and other okay. efficiencies in the state, right, okay. which there have been many. Um, the, other, the other significant, um, there, there's a small increase. Um, Twelve hundred dollars in the telephone, um, and this is where we pay for our, our alarm, um, our alarm monitoring of mm -hmm. the stations. There's thirteen of them. Uh, we did change companies um, so we can get a better, better, uh, better quality, and they notify us when we're supposed to be notified. And there's uh, um, we're working with them all the time. 
but th that's the increase there. What, what, which one item is that now? <clears throat> that is telephone. Is that 5225, Randy? 5225, yeah. yeah. And there's two telephones, one one is uh, for, it's a different, it's the same budget, but it's it's broken out for Ware River. Okay. So you, on this budget, you'll see two line items. One is for the North Sewer District, one's for the West Sewer di District. So how I go about it is I do three-year averages, and I look at what we spent last year, and then I formulate a budget okay. according okay. to those. Right. Those figures. Um, the other significant item um, was legal services and that went from three thousand dollars to five thousand dollars on uh, at the commission's request okay thank you so we do have a, a, a item in there now right there's, there's an i put an item in last year for yep. three thousand dollars yep and um i was asked to up that so i, I did up that You also have the um, capital budget. Uh, which I do a five year five year plan basically on the, on the capital items and the costs and it the first the first page is basically an overview of the capital outlay request, and then the second page is any vehicles that are coming up. Yeah. Um, there is one vehicle, uh, it's Unit 2. Okay. Um, that will be up on next year's, next year's uh, budget, <clears throat> and that's $34,000. What was that, a pickup or what? That's a utility body. Utility body. And, and really, right now there is there's four vehicles in the sewer department. One is up this year, and I just want to know, let the commission know this. I, I don't think there's it's necessary to have four vehicles, uh, four vehicles in the department. So what I'm going to request of the um, <coughs> capital outlay committee is if we could combine next year's request with this year's re request. And upgrade that vehicle to a uh, a sizable utility vehicle with a with larger crane, crane and stuff, yeah. in order to pull the pumps. Where right yeah. now we have to go out and hire hire, uh, yeah. hire yeah. a company, especially at Mill Street there. Yes, yeah, there's several stations that we have to yeah. do that. So that's I'm gonna good idea. At, at, you yeah. know, as long as you guys approve it, that'll be accessible to all the stations. You have to yeah. Yes. Is Mill Street yes. the deepest uh, manhole? Or? I think Greenbush. <clears throat> Greenbush. But we can't access any of those with our current utility body and mm -hmm. crane. So, yeah, so upgrade, we have the lease. Upgrade would be good. Yeah. Um, electrical capa uh, capabilities so we can run the camera in the street. Sure. Uh, we'd be better off. Yeah. Okay. So that's something I'm going to discuss with the capital. LA committee, but I wanted to let you know that. Go for it, man. That's one of our, <laughs> yeah, that's one of our goals is yep. to upgrade that equipment yep. and take one out of the workforce. Um, the next page is the uh, basically the project schedule for uh, our capital outlay for this year, and it's a, another five year uh, uh, pro projected schedule. In this year, we have uh, Bel Air Station, we want to replace a generator. Well, in coal, we want to replace the generator, and at Weir River, there's a there's an odor control system. It's called the Purifil filter. We want to replace that. Okay. The generator is at thirty thousand dollars a piece. The Purifil Purifil filter is fifteen thousand, and then there's fifty thousand for replacement of sewer laterals and then any roads that are going to be done for a total of one hundred twenty-five thousand. <coughs> That uh, pipeline on Mill Street, uh, Steve, that you showed me that uh, CD on, is that 
urgent? Uh, well, <clears throat> we, we're going to have to get in there at some point and do some investigation on the force main, the yeah. cast iron force main. It looks like it's pretty heavily tuberculated there. And, uh, I think we'll be able to. Uh, I think we'll be able to squeeze that in. I and I. R and M. I and I. Not a force main. We can't do I and I. Oh, okay. okay. All right. What is that now? At the end of Mill Street, Elder basically right at the. It discharges at ship and north. Okay. And so uh, I think we're going to be able to in-house at least get a peek in there, and then we can make a decision. Yeah. Can can that be cleaned? Can that be routed, cleaned? You know, I, is there enough integrity left in the pipe to, to clean it? And from Based on some of the old footages I've yeah. seen uh, during the Greenbush construction, yep. I think so. I don't want to commit to that until we yeah. really get in there and have a better look at it. But okay. I think Do you know if it's ductile iron or cast iron in there? It's cast. Cast, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, ductile. Ductile, okay. All right. That's pretty much it with it. I'm, I'm good job. I mean... Uh, want to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve this budget. Okay. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, All right, Randy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, under other items, not necessarily reasonably known 48 hours in advance of the meeting, I got a letter from uh, the Board of Health, and they were talking about World's End area, and they have a problem there with se uh, septic system overflowing. And he's going to do an overview on and come back to us on what we can do. We might have to look into extending the sewer system to uh, the wheel's end if it's that bad, you know. No, that's been on Bruce Capman's radar for 20 years. Huh? It's been on Bruce Capman's <coughs> radar for 20 years. Well, just to get the numbers that we need to get, okay, to get to, that's a heavy task. Okay, Absolutely. because you're going up a state road, <laughs> then you're going into Martin's Lane down to the end down there. Uh, we need to also make sure that our pipelines back to these other stations where that effluent is going to be transferred and pumped around has the capacity to do this. So that's have why. To be a study done. Yeah, yeah, we need to really we take a very hard look at this. Uh, you know, we're going to have to task that out, okay? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's something we're going to have to look into yeah. because it, if it gets to the point where it's going into the harbor, then you're going to get the DEP and you're going to get the uh, Army Corps of Engineers involved. Some of the, the Rear River project, you know. So I'll just keep that in mind anyway. We can, we'll talk to the MWRA. We'll talk to the MWA and see what the steps are. Yeah, I, t I talked to him I went to the meeting. I told him, and he said, you people are always extending piecemeal. And he says, we want a, a master plan, you know. And uh, so it might be a problem, because that's a long, you know, 200-foot reach. We're way beyond that, you know. But yeah, it would have to be an extension of the... The contract, yeah. Of the um, district. Yeah. All right, is there anything else to be brought up? I, I just wanted to ask real quick, going back to the sewer policy uh, uh, update, um, I think you mentioned that there have been working sessions with regards to policy proposals for that. Uh, is it something that has been announced for the general public to be able to comment on the or do you anticipate that will come later to get a final draft for review and then be brought up for opportunity to discuss it? Yeah, yeah, no. We'll have a final draft and then we'll bring We'll have the public, public review. review, right. Yeah. Steve, do you have anything else? Randy? Mill Street looks good. Do you want my report? The paint the paint job looks good. <laughs> Ed, uh, do you want my report? Yeah. Is that the one that I asked you for? No, the one that you want every month. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Walton Cove Station had it well, well modified by clearing the concrete sluice way of debris and cutting old pipe work away to allow the flow to enter the wet well without restriction. This has alleviated the surcharge in the lines on Downer Avenue. Final project cost has not quite been tallied yet, but the, as the bills are still coming in, 
but uh, the preliminary it looks like it's well under budget. Weir River Station had its wet well modified by removing the two 10 horsepower hydromatic pumps along with the rails and discharge piping and replaced them with two 15 horsepower Homer Vortex pumps, railings and discharge piping. The Vortex pumps are rated to pass up to a four inch solid and have eliminated the need for the collection basket. This will reduce the main maintenance cost. Preliminary calculations indicate that the project was performed for approximately five to 10,000 under budget. Power Products Inc. is in the process of performing generator service at several of the stations. Uh, the sewer department crew performs all generator maintenance within their capabilities. Power Products comes in to perform the maintenance that's beyond the scope of the crew's capabilities, such as water pump replacements and, and things of that nature. Uh, as discussed at the Sem September 9th, 2014 Sewer Commission meeting, we purchased a new closed caption TV push camera with capital funds for approximately $14,000. As Ed, you had asked me, uh, now you wanted me to do a comparison. Uh, National Water Main Cleaning Company quoted a price of $3,000 a day to rent a lateral truck and crew. Based on this quote, the new push camera will pay for itself in less than four days of use. Uh, we already have uh, close to four hours work lined up for later this week. So, will the crew use that themselves or do we have to have somebody else? No, no, we'll use that. Okay. After procuring proposals, Associate Roofing Inc. has given a low proposal to replace the roof at Walton Cove Station. This will include the installation of a Bilco hatch over the wet well to provide better access for confined space. And I have a contract with me in the amount of $21,450 that I hope the Commission will approve and sign. There's an additional line item in the contract for $700 to clear the roof drains if we need to do that. So the total contract amount would be $28,450. Which one is that now? Walton. That's for the Walton Cove, Walton Cove. Station roof, okay. uh, which we pushed that off a little bit and we've got leaks in there now. So okay. I'd appreciate it if you'd entertain a motion to sign this contract. Do we have money in the, in the capital budget? Yes, that, right? yes okay. the capital budget's fine. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we sign that off on that, Ed. Okay, second okay. motion. Second, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Okay. Let me just sign that. Signatures on that. Uh, Might as well. Those, yeah. Okay. You can only go to jail once. <laughs> well, the Maria. Exactly. As long as I get cable TV, they will be all set. Thank you. Thank you. Any further business. Make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did you end at eight eight twenty?